Zeppelin Rouge, the just concluded 20th National Congress of the CPC, has laid out a new blueprint for China's future development, including shaping the trajectory of its engagement with the world. So, with such a background, what messages are being sent by China's active diplomacy this week, shortly following the Party Congress? I think this、uh, constitutes a major new initiative towards、uh, harmonic development in the world. So I think that this、um, is a very important <clears throat> step, you know, because the world is in deep trouble. We have incredible challenges, as President Xi Jinping has Xi Jinping has always emphasized.、Uh, challenges which have not been seen since a hundred years.、Mm-hmm. We face the danger of nuclear war. We have a out of control inflation in in many of the countries of the transatlantic sector. So I think what China is bringing into this world is a completely different approach.、Uh, I think the potential of the combination of the Belt and Road Initiative, the Global Development Initiative, and the Global Security Initiative, these are all conceptions which can bring a complete different paradigm into the world situation. Speaking of the purpose and objectives of China's foreign policy, that is to maintain world peace, promote common development, and build a community with a shared future for mankind. Zabla Rouge, how do you read these objectives of China's foreign policy, especially when、uh, many believe we are living in a world where forces are keen to draw ideological lines and provoke confrontation between camps? Well, I think this idea of a community with a shared future of mankind is very important because it should remind people that we are sitting in one boat, and especially in times when the danger of a global nuclear war <clears throat> is on the horizon.、Uh, I think it is a very useful concept to remind people that if it ever would come to that, nobody would survive such a war.、Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you know, it's also You know, a, a forward-looking conception for the new paradigm, because I think we are, have reached an epochal change in the history of mankind, where we have to overcome geopolitical thinking,、um, because geopolitical thinking was the cause for two world wars in the 20th century, and if we continue to think in terms of blocks,、uh, this can go awfully wrong. So the idea of the shared community. Uh, of the future of mankind is the idea that we have to think about the one humanity first, and that there can be no national interest or the interest of a group of nations、mm-hmm. which would be in contradiction to the one humanity. So I think this is a very important concept, and I think it would be very good if the Western countries would not just、uh, push it aside, but recognize that this is a、uh, philosophical idea. Which does give a concept how we can build a future where all of humanity can prosper and survive.、Uh, Zabla Rouge, what's your take? How do you look at the centrality、uh, accusation against China? Well, I think you know if you go away from the、uh, words and actually look at the substance behind all of this is the fact that the Western countries have pursued. The neoliberal model of economy, and that is collapsing right now.、Uh, I would even say that we are in the final phase of a hyperinflationary blowout <coughs> of the transatlantic system, and because of that, they look at the rise of China as a systemic threat. Now, China is doing nothing to uh, give uh, reason uh, to be regarded as a threat, but I think it's the Idea that you know only if you contain the rise of China, if you decouple from Russia, from China, that you can somehow maintain what they call the rules-based order. Now, what this rules-based order is, nobody knows exactly. It's also not so clear of who is making these rules. We have the UN Charter, which should be the standard for international law. But I think you know the idea that China should be a systemic rival, that is not. Uh, what the majority of the world population thinks, I think more than 150 countries who are cooperating with China in the Belt and Road Initiative do not see China as a systemic rival, but they see China as that country which helps them to overcome 
the relics of colonialism and poverty and underdevelopment. So I think, you know, it's it's really a tragedy that the Western media are so absolutely uh, unified. You know, the German word for this is gleichgeschaltet, that they don't allow any more any truthful coverage, because if the people of Europe and the United States would know the reality of what enormous progress China has made, they would not believe this story about systemic rivalry, because, you know, China has said many times that there is absolute room for everybody. Uh, Xi Jinping has made many times offers, especially to the United States, saying that there is a new concept of great power relationship, uh, that the two strongest economies of the world must cooperate. Uh, and I think that the idea of, uh, you know, finding a win-win cooperation remains the only way how we will get out of these many calamities in which the world are right now. Zabla Rush, another question uh, based on what you just uh, talked about, because China has repeatedly stated that it will never accept any zero-sum game uh, or the lawn of jungle, but many uh, experts believe this is a challenge to Western values. How do you look at such acquisitions? Well, what is behind that is that since about 2017, especially the British, but also the U.S. national security papers, the national security doctrines, started to characterize China as a, a systemic rival, as a competitor, and even harsher words. And, you know, in a certain sense, you know, China pursues a policy of harmonious development. And I have not found, and I'm really a critical observer of politics, I have not seen any country of the developing sector, the global south, who would complain that they have been coerced by China. These mm -hmm. accusations only come from the Western media. And, you know, I think that China has, on the other side, learned the lesson from, you know, its long history, from the century of humiliation, uh, the enormous struggles of the 20th century. And now that China is finally strong enough to not have to put Thanks, Zepla Rouge. You are listening now to Bro Today. Let's have a short break. We'll be back in a minute. Zepla Rouge, what do you think uh, makes this meeting so significant to China and Germany in particular? Uh, I think it is extremely important uh, because it uh, brings together the second and the fourth largest economies of the world. And obviously, their collaboration is extremely important to solve uh, any problem in the world. Uh, it is also very noteworthy because Scholz did this trip despite enormous pressure uh, to not uh, have a good relationship with China. He's being pressured enormously from the US, from the British and the Atlanticist inside Germany. As a matter of fact, you know, the German foreign minister uh, Baerbock, uh, she is completely unreasonable in relationship to China. And um, therefore, I think it's very important that Scholz does this, especially as the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relation between China and Germany uh, is, uh, has just occurred last, year, uh, last month. And obviously, you know, with the enormous rise of China, Germany has profited enormously. A lot of the uh, living standard in Germany uh, was also... Uh, supported by the strong integration of the two economies. So I think, you know, it is extremely important and I'm actually happy because I hope that this will be a signal for all the other European countries mm -hmm. and uh, it will be a sign of uh, at least a little demonstration of sovereignty on the side of Germany. But Zeppelin Rouge, the German-based media has been bombarded for days with a commentary on whether Shaw's visit to China is showing weakness to Beijing or um, is buying time for Germany to win itself of dependence on China. Uh, what's your reflection on their perspective? What's the main name, in your opinion, of Shaw's trip to China? Well, I mean, Scholz just wrote a longer piece in the German newspaper FAZ, uh, where he says he wants to reduce the dependencies on certain uh, supply chains. I mean, that makes sense because as we have seen in the pandemic, that if you don't have a certain security in terms of essential goods, 
this can be devastating in times of crisis. But that is different than to say, you know, that uh, Germany should decouple. If Germany would decouple right now after because of Atlantis's pressure, the relationship with Russia has already been completely ended. You know, right now there is no relationship between Russia and Germany anymore. These are the words of uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov. Uh, I think that the uh, if Germany would give in to this pressure and also decouple from China, that would be the end of Germany as an industrial nation. Mm -hmm. We will we will look in an enormously difficult period in the coming fall and the winter, the energy prices, the food prices, the inflation. Um, we are look, looking at the potential deindustrialization of Germany. And many leaders of the German industry have said that very clearly. So I think, you know, for Germany, the relationship with China must absolutely be a cornerstone of, uh, you know, the existence of Germany as an industrial nation. But I'm optimistic that, you know, the industry leaders who are accompanying uh, Scholz on this trip uh, have said that very clear that they see the future uh, of the German economy being uh, very closely tied to that of China. But it will be a battle because, you know, I expect that the pressure uh, is coming uh, from the US and Great Britain. Um, so it will be a question, can Germany assert its sovereignty mm -hmm. and its own interest? And if uh, hopefully that will happen, uh, then the future is bright. And I have said many times that the fact that there is now a new economic system developing between the countries of the global south, the BRICS, the SCO, mm -hmm. uh, the Eur Eurasian Economic Union, these countries are all building a new economic system. And it would be in the fundamental interest for Germany, which is an export nation, uh, you know, to cooperate. And hopefully, if, if Germany goes in this direction, many other European countries will see the benefit for them as well. Zappala Rouge, aside differences uh, between China and Germany, both China and Germany are actually the beneficiaries of a globalization and are striving for a more just international order with less political games, sanctions and uh, confrontations. Do you think both sides do have the same vision in these turbulent times as Dr. Ron suggested? In what areas can China, Germany, cooperation and uh, communication better ensure multilateralism in the world? Well, I mean, obviously, when you think small minded, then you think that uh, the world is only uh, make, made up of competitors. But if you think creatively and you think that scientific and technological progress is what makes the economy progress, which was the philosophy of Germany for a very long time, and it is now the philosophy of China with the continuous application of innovation, if those two countries would sh join their creative efforts in terms of discovery of new fundamental physical principles, scientific and technological progress, and they would cooperate, they could become so strong as a locomotive of the world economy. For example, if Germany and China would cooperate in the area of artificial intelligence, digitalization, uh, MENT, uh, space flight, it would open up a whole array of new technologies, real fundamental breakthroughs as they go along with uh, space science and space uh, travel. You know, it would really be a, a, a complete science driver for the whole world. Mm -hmm. So hopefully those um, elements of the German economy, which are still, you know, in the traditional German sense and have not been infected by the green delirium, as uh, Václav Klaus, the former president of Czechia, uh, was calling it, uh, then, you know, these two countries could cooperate tremendously to the benefit of the whole world, because the industrial capacity of the entire world economy presently is below that which is needed to create enough food and development for all countries. I mean, that is mm -hmm. the reason why we have world famine and lack of clean water and all of these problems. Mm -hmm. I think philosophically, we must go back to the spirit of Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who was a philosopher in the 17th and 18th century, who in 1697 wrote the beautiful 
Novissima uh, Zinica, uh, what is new from China. Mm. And he was at that time adv advertising that Germany and all of Europe should cooperate with China to reach out uh, and touch their hands and develop all the countries on the planet. And I think that would be the joint mission for China and uh, Germany to adopt in the best tradition of the, you know, Leibnizian outlook, which was the most advanced uh, philosophical conception uh, Germany had. Uh, Zeppelin Rouge, what's your reflection on China's emphasis on uh, neighboring diplomacy at the top priority of its foreign relations? <clears throat> well, I think the success of that outlook is uh, pretty obvious because for example, you know, when you look at the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, the RECEP, which was founded in the beginning of this year, <clears throat> this has now become the largest uh, free trade zone in the world. In ASEAN, you have a similar uh, very good cooperation. And, you know, all the other economic and political alliances, uh, partnerships China has, the BRICS, for example, that's not all neighbors, but nevertheless, the SCO, all of these are examples of extremely well-functioning uh, relationships among China and its neighbors. And I think the success of that is seen by the fact that the economic dynamics in the world has clearly shifted to Asia. Uh, you know, I think the A Asian economic cooperation not only China, but also many of the other Asian countries, has become really the the motor of the world economy. And I think this uh, is very important for the future because you know, we are in a transition form. It's very clear that the old system um, of geopolitical control and, uh, you know, block building, this will not be uh, suitable for the future and a new model of cooperation has to be found and I think uh, what China has done in uh, making these kinds of new diplomatic relations uh, that can actually be a role model for many parts of the world based on sovereignty, non-interference, uh, acceptance of a different social model. So all of these are ideas which would be very useful for other countries to study.